This type of content is a blast from the past, isn't it? Hi, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I want to look over one of Tana Mojo's recent podcasts. Why do I want to do this? I don't know. I feel just, I've been really umming and ahhing about doing a video like this, but I feel compelled to. And I'm not going to be, or I'm going to try to refrain from being like, obnoxious and rude and stuff because that's not my intention actually <laughs> if my intention was to take the piss i'd tell you but tana's had a little bit of backlash from one of her recent podcasts and right i have been listening to her podcast on and off since she started it look at me trying to justify that mm. <laughs> because sometimes there's there's always something else on there's always something else i could be doing sometimes i just like to i don't know i don't know okay i don't know why it's just fascinating right and i will say this video is sponsored by toon blast toon blast is a puzzle game with unique gameplay and endless fun toon blast is a free-to-play mobile game available on all devices where you have to solve puzzles by blasting cubes and creating powerful combos to pass levels play over 7,000 fun levels with great graphics cute characters and smooth animations and help the toon gang to travel around magical worlds the game has millions of reviews and very high ratings on google play and the app store no joke i've been playing this game non-stop for the past hour hence why i'm at level 63. You can also join a team to work with other players and earn awesome rewards. See, weren't that nice of me, helping them out. I'll show you how the game works. If you're brilliant like me, they give you those little free power-ups in the beginning if you've been continuing your no-lose streak. Master gamer. So you can combine these rockets and bombs to make like ultra rockets and bombs. And on this level, I have to get rid of the blocks and then the cans and then the bubbles. There's actually quite a lot to do now. Now I'm feeling the pressure. Now I feel like I've just chatted a big game. So if I lose, I'm gonna look silly. You wanna try and create as many combos as possible like that. So you can just wipe out the entire screen. And I have nine moves left. I've only got three bubbles actually. Brilliant. Me, wonderful. No Wi-Fi is needed to play the game. You can play it anywhere and at any time. And one of the best features in my opinion, there are no in-game ads. There are instead mini games that you can play. So I'm to watch adverts. Brilliant. No ads in a mobile game in 2023? Well, I never. So what are you waiting for? Download Toon Blast for free in my description box via the link or the QR code on screen somewhere and receive free hours of unlimited lives and 100 coins. Thank you, Toon Blast, for sponsoring today's video. Not that it means much coming from me, because whilst I do my own podcast, like, it's not... Podcasting ain't actually, like, the easiest content to do. I mean, it's easy, I suppose, if, like, you're a toxic alpha male bloke and you just, like, chat a bunch of shit in front... I imagine that's, like, quite easy. Um, but trying to be engaging and getting guests on and getting guests on who can also being engaging on camera and thinking of topics and stuff. I find it way easier to do my main channel and stuff, you know? And I'm not saying like, and I've had to get better at doing podcasting myself. So I will say as a compliment, the podcast that she and her co-host Brooke do is a lot better than when it was when it first started. Cause when it first started, they had a lot of issues with mainly Tana, interrupting each other, talking over each other, always relating things back to themselves. like. There was this one episode where Tana said something like, um, oh, I might be getting a book deal. And Brooke said, oh, I like reading. I like books. Like, I, 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 me, me, me. So I will say it's definitely gotten a lot better on that front. And it's best, I don't listen to the episodes when they get guests on because then like that's, that's too much for me. When, it, when it's just them two, it's like, you can put on, it's like, it's light entertainment. It's enjoyable. Why am I trying to justify myself to you? What do you care? And a few months ago, Tana did something that interested me where she did what she calls 75 hard. But 75 hard is a list of rules to follow, including changing your diet, exercising twice a day with once being an out outdoor workout, reading every single day, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know how much she stuck to that, but one of the rules was no alcohol. So she didn't drink alcohol for 75 days and she likes to drink. She likes to party. 
right? So that was interesting to observe because she definitely put out more content. She, she wasn't like sober sober. She was what is called California sober where you still smoke weed. But it was interesting to see that change. It did seem like she was becoming more thoughtful, more introspective, maturing a little bit and stuff. And I've done content on her before and it was quite nice to see. She went on to H3H3's podcast and was talking about her life and talking about all of this stuff. And back when I used to do more drama content, yeah, she did the MTV series. She got so much backlash that she went on this um this self-proclaimed journey of discovery, maturity and growth, where it did seem like she was talking about how much she'd grown and changed and matured. But I swear she's been doing that since she first started getting on tr in trouble on YouTube, to be honest. I know right now that the person that a lot of people might think I am online is not who I am. And I, I know what happened throughout that time that we were filming those episodes. And I can easily clarify that for you today and then she goes on the h3h3 H3 podcast whilst doing 75 hard and it did actually seem like she had matured and grown and it was quite what's the expression for me once shame on me for me twice shame on you no for me once shame on you for me twice shame on whatever you, you see what i mean so it was interesting to observe from afar right and i thought oh this is some good changes being made that's quite nice actually I dubs apologized to her. She took that graciously. That's a funny one, the whole I dubs situation, right? Because back in the day when Filthy Frank was still a thing and Hatred Hatred was an anti SJW and that type of thing, I was firmly like in that camp of consuming that type of content, right? So watching I dubs, watching, well, Filthy Frank was always a character, so it doesn't really count, but watching like Filthy Frank and Max Mofo watching h 3 h And then as I got older, and so I remember the Tana Mojo content co coming out. And at the time I didn't know who she was. So when I watched it, I was like, oh, what a idiot. Like that's ridiculous. And then because that came out, her channel started getting recommended to me. So I just watched a video every now and then. She kind of grew on me a little bit. And as I grew and matured, cause you know, iDubbbz, he's since retracted everything that he said. You know, if I'm gonna have the balls to go to Tana's uh, fan meetup and say slurs at her and then make a video about how it's okay to say slurs. I, I think I should have the balls to make an apology video and take accountability for the mistakes I've made. He used to say either all of it's okay or none of it's okay. And at the time I thought, yeah, it seems reasonable. I don't agree with that now, but that's called actual growth and change and stuff. As I matured, I realized no, that was actually pretty fucked up what he did because she was 18 and he went to her event to harass her in person whilst he was about 26. And I realized that over the past few years of like, well, I, as I was getting older and as I got to 26 and I just kind of realized, yeah, no, that's not something that I would be doing at that age. It's all a bit strange. So he apologized. She took it graciously, but she was a bit too like self- flagellating for my liking. She was a bit too, well, it helped me grow and it helped me change. And I feel that Tana Mojo is very good at saying the right things. And I'm gonna prove that point to you in this video. She's gotten just, she may, she's changed in that she's gotten very good at knowing what to say to get public approval or incite a bit of sympathy when it comes to this kind of stuff. But it seemed that when she was doing 75 hard, 75 light, whatever, she, was inspiring a lot of like goodwill in her own career. I'm not the only schmuck that was thinking, oh, that's nice, that's good. She's undone it all in the past like three weeks. It's impressive actually, it's quite impressive. Do you know one of my notes here? I've got no notes. They're all one words apart from <sighs> uses words wrong, thinks implored means explore. Cause you know her audience, her audience will, um, when, when she appears on other people's channels, we're all to be like, she's so well-spoken and incredibly intelligent and stuff. Um, you know, I think she's smart enough. Wrong, <laughs> big words. Me, what an idiot. More, I guess, sophisticated words. Wrong all the time. She literally said, and that was a relationship that I wanted to implore with him. Anyway, so in the past few weeks, here's what's gone on, right? First, there was this situation with this model where she tried to hit on the model's boyfriend via Instagram. And then the model reacted badly to that. And then it all got taken public and each of them were showing each other's DMs or whatever. I saw, I think I saw this on TikTok and I was like, this is too immature for me. I can't deal with it. I need to unfollow all this crap right now. And, but she texts, she, 
here's the thing. Tana's 25 now and it's not cute to act like this anymore. You can't be acting like this anymore when you're 25, right? Because she texted the model saying something like, blah, 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 die. What gets me, it's like, as a public figure, you ca you can't, you could get away with that if you weren't a public figure, but you know that you're a public figure. So like, you can't be telling people to die in DMs. I'm not saying if you're not a public figure, that's okay. It's not an okay thing to do, but why would you, when you know that it can be leaked so easily and people already have like so much against you, why would you, there's no, so impulsive, which of course she is. She's got ADHD, I've got ADHD, but like you need some constraint mate so firstly there was that then there was a bit of a thing with the side man i don't really care about that to be honest and then she went to france she put up a podcast about it so that's what we're going to look at we're going to look at the podcast tana got in a fist fight in france oh and all these comments are on her like from her little sycophants it's like when we did the Sophia episode and by the time we did her episode, you were like, mmm. yeah, I might have approved a two sped up version and all the, I know you like sounded like, um, like literally like Alvin and the chipmunk. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little scary. All the comments, it. all the comments thought I was like doing whippets or something <laughs> like I was the fact that anything like that can happen to me. Like my voice is sped up and people are like, oh my God, are you on whippets? Are you doing helium, Tana? Don't let London turn you into that. It's like, Do are people doing helium? That's what they say in London. Like we're doing helium and they like oh. the balloons. I don't know. I've never heard anyone say we're doing helium in London. It's we're doing balloons. And it's NOS balloons, laughing gas. Like, what are you talking about? Also, she thinks that <laughs> there was a previous episode where she was complaining about like London or whatever and how rude they are to Americans, which is very ironic, by the way, because <laughs> how can I say this without offending my American audience? The way she acts at this um, wine tasting she went to is one of the reasons why Europeans might not like American tourists so much. Not all, obviously, but well, let's say LA influencers. Let's just keep it safe. She said if she goes to a coffee shop in London and speaks in an American accent, they're, they're rude to her. But then if she speaks in a British accent and her British accent, like, sorry, I, do I don't know why they all keep doing this as well. Like your Brit British accents are fucking abysmal. Like no one talks like that. People don't talk like that on Made in Chelsea. On Made in Chelsea, it's just a bit, it's not like, oh, can I have a cup of coffee? No one talks like that. We're not Dick Van Dyke in Mary Poppins. That there is what you might call a doorway to a place of enchantment. What are you talking about, mate? People in London talk like this, innit? Most of the time, depends if they're roadmen. People probably find my exaggerated American accent really annoying, but it really annoys me when these people do their English accents because it's like literally no one like that. My accent is doing a chameleon thing right now. I can't decide whether I want to be a roadman or from Mayfair. Ignore me. We were in London for a couple of days. Um... It was super fun, but you already know London's not like necessarily my favorite place in the world. This was one of my favorite trips there. Like it, maybe slowly I'm in a redemption arc and there are so many sexy sexies there. So, oh, that's another thing. When she was complaining about London before, okay, this is so funny to me because like I complained about London quite a lot. Like I left London because it's just not accessible unless you're a trust fund kid, I guess. It, it's not an accessible city to live in unless you want three quarters of your fucking wage going to rent over and flip. I complain about London a lot. I'm always like, shit, oh, London. I tell my friends who, who still live there, who still are idiotic enough. Like, why are you paying 900 quid a month? Not for one bedroom flat, but for a room. What are you talking about? Leave, get out of there. <laughs> I don't live like that far away from London. I complain about it all the time, all the time, but I can. Because England is my city. As soon as someone else Right, starts complaining about, and you've not even lived in London. If you've lived there for a bit, you can complain about it. God, even like when people who live outside London are like, oh, it's just too busy there. I won't be able to like live there. Well, not everywhere. You're not going to live in Piccadilly Circus, are you? What are you talking about? She was complaining about the food in London, right? But then I saw on Instagram, or was it TikTok? I can't remember that she was like, I've just been to Cafe Nero. I'm not gonna do an American accent because it's gonna piss people off and it make me seem really hypocritical for my ranch just then. I've just been to Cafe Nero. They have the best coffee in London. Now, <laughs> I don't know what that was. It's the demon taking hold of me. I like Cafe Nero, don't get me wrong, but to say with your chest that it's the best coffee in, in London, this national chain, when there's like a billion different artisan, hipster, bespoke coffee places in London. And then you're gonna have the audacity to complain about the food and drink in London. What are you talking about, mate? Look at me getting so bloody patriotic. As we're in Paris, 
this man who really likes me flew there to see me from LA. Yes. A sweet guy who does everything for you and like just loves you and is so sweet is amazing. But sometimes it's just not the vibe. I don't think it's for, I think I would rather have someone hate me. Okay. I know, and I'm kidding, I'm kidding, but I just mean like, are you getting the ick? It's beyond that, I don't know. It's, it's not, I need someone with a little grit. Wait, no, that's so funny. <laughs> like a, a guy flies across the sea to go, I'm just commenting on this podcast now. Maybe I should be, no, no one would want, no one would want me as a co-host when I think I'm a dickhead. But like a guy really flies across the ocean to go hang out with you and you're like, oh yeah, but it's kind of icky though. It's a bit like clingy. That's so funny. So um, Rob was like, you guys want to go on a wine tour? Let me book it. And I'm like, perfect. That sounds amazing. Book it. So he reaches out to the people and requests to book the same wine tour he went on last time. After it's booked, they tell me, you're going to have to be at the train station tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. The train station? We're in France, like central oh, so France, you, okay. and it's in the north of France. It's like four hours away. It's not true. Four hours away isn't true. Someone found this. The train, the wine tour in question that she's talking about, the train from Paris to Domans is one hour, 15 minutes. So, but we already know from the content I've done that she embellishes stories, right? She likes to exag exaggerate, fine, whatever. That's not the issue here. But let's preface it by saying she's already lied. It's not a four hour, it's not a four hour train journey. Like London to Paris is about a two hour, one and a half to two hour train journey. What are you talking about? Four hours still in France, behave. <laughs> And I, 8 a.m., you know, that's my kryptonite. That's, I'm heartbroken already just knowing I have to do that. Then don't go. No, she just, like, so much of this could have been solved if you just didn't go. It's okay to not, you don't have to go to things if you don't want to. Like, it's it's fine. I wouldn't get up at 8 a.m. for a wine tasting anyway, but I don't drink wine. So for anyone that's new to this channel or has clicked on this video because Tana Mojo is in the thumbnail or in the clickbait title, I mentioned the sobriety in the 75 hard because I've been sober forever four years and that's sober sober tito all like no weed nothing in my head i was just calculating then if the doctor gave me really strong painkillers would i well yeah if it's medicated sure why not but tito all proper not a drink not a sip not a line not a toke nothing the night before we go out with some friends and we have a very long night it was just a very long, wild, super fun night. And we all go to bed at about 6 a.m. Then don't go to a wine tour that's at 8 a.m. Do you know, like one one time, I was with some mates, we were on gear all night. And then the next morning at, I think, 11. No, it's not very morning, is it? At 11 a.m., I, I went to a boxing session. And I wanted to cancel, but I didn't because I'd feel bad about it. And I went and I did it and some parts were miserable because I was still like out of it and gurning, but it was fine. I feel like if you're going to commit, then you have to just commit or just don't go. There are so many times that I would like, fuck, I wouldn't go to, I'd make up some excuses about being really ill so I wouldn't go to work so I could continue doing gear. Do you know what I mean? Like you don't, you have to go to work to have money to pay for rent, but but don't go to bed at 6 a.m. Then wake up at 8 a.m. And then she's horrible to this lady, by the way. She's absolutely awful. She doxes her. I feel like I should say that now. Because some people might be getting like <laughs> moody of me in the comments being like, why are you talking about this? She doxes this woman off this wine tour. Okay. And inadvertently or advertently weaponizes her fan base to go review bomb this poor lady for this. Okay. To my surprise, the woman who is our tour guide, who is taking us on the tour is there to greet us at the train station. Okay. Keep in mind where we're going is like three hours away. It's not three hours away. And plus, as part of the tour guide itiner the tour guide itinerary, it does say meet Cynthia at <laughs> Gardile. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Train station in Paris. Da, 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 that and you know during the train journey she will talk to you about the wine and stuff. Like that's clearly part of the itinerary. So and it's not a three. Funny how it went from four hours to three hours though, that train journey, huh? Good I'm actually guide. gonna be calling her by her name. Oh, is she horrible? Cynthia. Is that Cynthia? I wrote it down. Let me make sure it's fucking Cynthia. 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 
Uh oh. She doxes the lady with absolutely no regards to this person's business. Because the thing is, is you could have just used a fake name. Use a fake name, like, well, if you'd said four hour train journey, your audience wouldn't have been able to work it out because you're clearly wrong, you know? Um, just like factually incorrect. Because the thing is, this podcast, it's two friends talking and sometimes they vent and that's fine. But like, if you have millions of followers, which she does, you do have to be responsible. Because obviously it's not, especially when it's teenagers and teenagers who are going to ride or die for you until they grow out of that phase. Like they're not gonna, <sighs> ethically, Ethically, you have to be a bit more careful, but considering you're a multimillionaire from this profession, I think it's a pretty fair trade-off, like to have to be a little bit ethical about these things and be a little bit responsible. It's a fair, you know. And there's no way that Tana at this point in her career doesn't understand that, of course she does. She's just being malicious here, which is unfortunate because it really undoes all the goodwill that she guarded throughout the past few months. And, there, and there's no way that she can proclaim ignorance or innocence. She knows what she's doing by now because she's had a billion scandals to learn from. We get to the train station and I am i haven't eaten. I'm so hungover. That's not their responsibility. You're being hungover and hungry is not the train station's responsibility, dude. Or this lady's. They tell us there's going to be food on the train. There's going to be food there. We get on the train. There's no food on the train. She embellishes so much that I don't know if I even believe that, to be honest. Like, either pick up some sandwiches at Paris or there might have been food there. I don't know. I don't believe her. I'm hungover. I'm sad. And she starts immediately talking to us. And she asks a question that for me is going to be the entire preface of my frustration with this story. Okay? Okay. She looks at all of us and she says, this tour can go one of two ways. Would you like to have a fun tour? Or an educational tour. Why the fuck would I want to have an educational tour? You know the irony, the sheer irony in them complaining about this? Because you know some people like education and like to learn. The irony in this is that Tana Mojo owns a wine brand. She doesn't. She All this stuff I know. Well, actually, I don't know this against my will. No, this is my fault that I know this. The dizzy wine that she had, that she has is a collaboration with a pre-existing wine company that just packages a label onto like their wine. Um, but she's played off to her audience as she owns this wine company and yada, yada, yada. Yeah, she's twisting the truth and stuff. So like, I mean, I know that's not true. She knows that's not true. Other people, grown-ups know that's not true. Her audience, who knows, right? So like, babe, at least pretend that you're interested in, like if you own, quotations a wine company at least pretends that you're interested in how to make wine at least pretend that you're interested in like learning and educating yourself on it to, to keep up the <laughs> illusion i guess do you know what i mean am i insane i feel like i'm insane why am i doing this i guess that is like what a wine tour is for but yeah but i think that our no, age yeah. range yeah she's not know. necessarily whatever she's saying her age range because she's acting as though I think during this podcast, she acts as though like they were the only people there. This was a tour. It would have been with other people who would have been interested in, it's not all about her and her little like LA group of friends. So bear that in mind when she ruins the tour for everyone else. So then I put in my headphones for what is probably one minute and I intend on sleeping on this two and a half hour train ride. Four hours to three hours to two and a half hours. It's comical, isn't it? Writes itself, doesn't it? And I feel a tap on my shoulder. Oh. As I'm dozing off. It's Cynthia. Cynthia. I take my headphone out. And she proceeds to go on a 30-minute tangent to me about why Vouve Clicquot Champagne is called Vouve Clicquot Champagne. Shut the fuck up, Cynthia. <laughs> it's a tour. What do you expect? People are going to talk to you. Good Lord. As she's on this entire tangent... She lets us know that we will be spending the day walking approximately six or seven miles. That's also not true. The itinerary says 9.45 to 10.15, walk along the Marne River. So a 30 minute walk. A 30 minute walk is a mile and a bit. You're 25, you can't, and you're healthy, I guess. You can't walk a mile and a bit through some, through some vineyards 
in the beautiful French countryside. No, that's too much for you. Six, seven, what are you talking about? And even later in the itinerary, it says 10.30 to 12.30, private tour of the vineyards, press center, tank room. So that's just walking through a factory to look at stuff and I guess taste it. So yeah, we're talking about a mile to maybe two miles of walking. She's, she's just lying. Rob is asking her like, what do you mean the tour I took last time is like, w- like was on a golf cart on whatever. And she's like, yeah, no, that's not this one. Like I booked you on a different one. I thought you'd no, like why it the- more. Again, this is just something that I don't believe. I don't believe that if you specifically requested a certain tour, the tour guide would just change it because they thought that you might like this one better without checking that with you beforehand. And considering the woman in question that they're talking about, she's this industry professional who's been doing this stuff for decades. Yeah, I really don't, I just don't, I don't believe that. Am I crazy for not believing the known liar of YouTube? Am I the one that's wrong? Paige was wearing heels. That's, again, if you're going to the French countryside, that's not their responsibility that you didn't wear trainers. If you're going to invite people on something <laughs> to walk seven fucking miles, don't you think Say you where should... where you're walking. Bring your Bring Air Max. Heads. Yeah. Yeah, seven miles is like 11 kilometers. They would not. It's a wine tour. So I'm assuming it's going to be older people. That might be quite the um, assumption to make. But I really don't think that they're going to be making people walk for 11 kilometers with no help no i just don't believe it sorry and i look i literally have to put on my sunglasses because i start crying 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 about having to walk a mile on a wine tour in the french countryside are you wow and then i put my headphones back in i'm trying to chill again another tap on my shoulder she lets us know First of all, the history of one of these sellers for another 20. This woman, I have never met someone who flaps their fucking gums like this. She's a tour guide. She's meant to tell you about, you don't pay a tour guide to then be silent. You wouldn't go on like the Jack the Ripper tours and have the guy be like, murdered people, didn't he? And that's it. What do you talk, what do you talk, do you not know what like a tour guide and a wine tour and like tours in general are? Oh my God. One of the sellers that we'll be hiking to has like 550 stairs to get up to the top. Cement stairs outside. And I look at her and I'm like, can we skip that one? And she's like, you cannot skip that one. It is the origin of this and this. And hold I go, I am not fucking walking up those stairs today, Cynthia. I'll die. And she looks at me and she goes, well, normally I can ask for elderly people, but since we have someone with mobility issues on this trip, I'll have to ask them if we can yeah, get Yeah, we elevator. sure do. Mobility issues? Fuck you, okay? <laughs> well, you are complaining about having to walk a mile. And not to flex or nothing, but I could walk six miles and I'm older than her. I could walk up that amount of stairs and I'm older than her. Worst brag in the world, but like she's complaining about and she's embellished. Like she's probably embellished the one, one and a bit mile to like, six or seven miles because it would sound bad to be like I can't even walk one mile and I'm completely able-bodied and young (laughs) and everything is so condescending it's giving like the Addison Rae nose crunch like I'll see if there's we can do something for someone with mobility issues and I'm like oh this is gonna get hit before we even get off this train again knowing the type of person Tana Mojo's public image is public persona is and how, like, there's so many clips of her just being really fucking obnoxious in public. She probably was being rude and obnoxious to this lady. So what, it's like not okay for this lady to get a bit snippy. And I don't, it's been proven that she's lied about a few of her story times, okay? Look it up, sheeple. I don't believe that this lady was as rude as she's saying, but even if she was a little bit rude or condescending, so that's not okay. But going on a podcast to call this older lady, I see you next Tuesday. Uh, she says lots of other like worse stuff later on. That's okay. Like, where's the line here? You know? You want to know the population of the town I was in? The population of the motherfucking town I was in. Do I? Like, 300. Apparently, the population of the town is actually 3,000. I don't know. I just saw someone else say it. So I'm just going to repeat it as verbatim as if it's fact. Um, But I don't know what that's got to do with anything. Like, okay, yeah, there's a couple thousand people. You're in the French countryside, which is dotted with hundreds dozens if not hundreds of small villages what's your point we're walking and we're walking and she keeps turning around to me and being like are you okay 
had I known I was signing up for an Iron Man today, <laughs> maybe I would have slept for 12 fucking hours. A mile. An Iron Man, babe. If you were actually doing 75 hard, shouldn't you be quite good at doing like a little outdoor workout? It Because it's two 45 minute workouts every single day for 75 days. That's an hour and a half of physical activity. So if you were actually doing 75 hard, shouldn't a little mile walk be no bother? I want the best for her, I truly do, but she's making it difficult. Fuck you and your are you. And yeah. it's not genuine, you know what I mean? Yeah, and she's just being a whore. How is she being a whore? How is calling a 55 year old woman a whore an acceptable response to she wanted to, us to walk one mile? Viewers of the podcast might notice that they'll say that they're for women, I guess, until it comes to women that have annoyed them. And then it's all whores, hoes, hookers, sluts, et cetera, et cetera. Very interesting. And she's educating us on everything that's happening, like what the grass is fertilized with and how, keep in mind, there's not a glass of wine in my hand at all. Like I am just- Yeah, see, all of this should have started after you started drinking. Cause then I might be like, okay, what's the like history of Voof? You know that you don't like drink, drink on wine tours. Do you, do you know that? Do you understand it? You know, like wine tasting is, as you guys know, I'm sober, I don't drink wine. My boyfriend has inquired cause he went to a wine tasting recently. He's part French. Hmm. I don't know why I did that. Mm, French, go. What? Bloody French people. I'm joking. Well, clearly, because I'm dating a French person. Um, he was like, would you be able to do a wine tasting? Because you know that you just like, you, you taste it and you spit it out. And I was like, that's like being like to a vampire. Do you want to just lick this cut? No. But thanks for asking. Because he just wanted to know if I could experience something nice with him. That's all, right? Thanks for thinking of me, babe. You know? But... Brooke, do you not understand? Do you not know that? Oh my God. To be fair, I'm sure there's probably lots of things that I don't know. Like I don't know which influencer is sleeping with which in LA. So there are things I'm ignorant and uneducated on too. Goes both ways, huh? And so now we're walking and we're walking through these pastures for what? Like an hour probably to finally get to this wine tour. And finally, I just cannot hear another word about the fertilization of the grass. And then don't go on a wine tour. Like literally just don't go on a wine tour. It's it's all of your problems started with this choice. And it's not even a wine tour that she's paid for, by the way. Like, it, like her friend or her fuck buddy's mate was paying for it. So just don't, go, whatever. And it's not even like she's just educating us on the tour. It's like this woman is telling us her whole life story and her daughters and what her husband does. And that's because this woman, Cynthia, is a expert within the wine industry. A cursory Google search shows you this information. So of course she's going to regale her tours. Like people who have picked this tour probably already know who she is. So, and even if they don't, she's an expert in the industry with like decades of experience. So of course she's going to relay some of that in a more personal way. <sighs> the ignorance is actually baffling. And the thing is, is like, Tyler can't really use the excuse of being young and dumb anymore because she is 25. You're going to be 26 next year, like closer to 30, which people can always grow and change and stuff. I know that like for me, I only started to, I only genuinely started to mature and grow when I gave up drinking and drugs. And when I got to 25, like I felt the switch then because my brain was fully developed and stuff, but she's managed to pass off a lot of her previous mistakes as being immature. And I'm sure like a bunch of them were, I'm not negating that, but you can't pass all of them off. At what point does it become a pattern? And at what point is that pattern clearly just your personality, you know? And at this point, I'm like heavy breathing. Like I would just like silence, you know, like at least I can just look at the view and like enjoy some silence. So eventually I put in my headphones. Everyone's also talking to me like, like, do you want me to carry you? Do you want me to help you? And it's like, oh my God, everyone just shut the fuck up. Were you hungover or on a come down? <laughs> and we're probably an hour 15 in. So we're about to be to the wine tour. And she turns around and she taps me. And she says, can you please take your headphones out? No, bitch. You are being extremely disrespectful. Well, it is. If I'd paid to go on a tour with other people and then the whole time I was just listening to music in my headphones. Because you go for the experience, right? And with that is going to come like a little bit of communicating with other people, I guess. Just kind of part of it. It's not a solo activity that you've chosen to do. Like just the exceptionalism 
is unmatched. That was the point where I, I, I went from Tana to Trina. Like there was no, Tana, Tana w- was left at the train station. Oh, I, no. I look her and I, 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 you know me too, when I get so mad, I'm laughing. Like it's not even like. Oh, I've heard, I could see you like. Well, it's so I interesting because we paid like, you, <laughs> Cynthia. <laughs> you want me to what? <laughs> like, I'm just laughing. I, I'm in utter disbelief. Just turn around and go back to the train station. Like, literally nothing was stopping any of them from just going back home. I don't, like, well, back to Paris. I don't get it. Like, no one's holding you at gunpoint to go on this wine tasting, are they? At this point, I check my steps app. I am at, like, 9,800 steps. That's too many steps if you haven't even had a glass of wine. That's like an hour and a half of walking. I don't buy it. There would be elderly people on this on this trip too, on this little tour. No, sorry, I don't. I have to be like out and about for a while to get to 9,800 steps. Source this. Are you kidding? Were there people on this tour who wanted the education of it all? Yeah. That's the problem. Some people are really proud of their own ignorance, huh? Wait, was it not just your group? No. Say... There's of other people and she was making a fuss. And it's just so not about the money to her. You can tell it's like it's she's her, it's her passion. Yes, but her passion to the point that she's like angry that we don't want this education. And it's like, well, we paid you. We told you we wanted to have fun. Yeah, we paid her for a wine tour. I don't understand. <laughs> you know, to like this 55 year old wine expert learning about wine probably is her idea of fun. I don't like what did what did they expect? Did they think that like they'd get really drunk and then just like start like popping ease or whatever? What would you expect? Like doing coke off of the vineyard leaves? What are you talking about? And so she takes us inside to what is like a little area overlooking the vineyard with tables where people come in and they try the wine. And we're all like, fine, let's just do this, whatever. Leave us with our bottles of wine, whatever. We all sit down around this table. Everyone's winded. We're so excited to finally crack a bottle of wine. She pulls up a chair. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she sits down with us and I am I'm just heartbroken. I, I thought I'm getting riled up. I thought for it was you. over. And then my friend lets me know that the soonest car that can come from Paris is going to take three hours. So I'm I will now be with Cynthia for around this table at least for three hours. Just go back to the train station then. It's not like <laughs> I don't think she realizes how out of touch she is. Oh, no, this car couldn't. It would take three hours to drive me from the French countryside back to Paris. Oh no, just get a, get the train back. And she gets out all the bottles of wine, obviously doesn't open them up, talks for another 45 minutes. And imagine me just sitting there staring at them like, please fucking open it. Interesting that she keeps saying, you know, she was talking for like an hour or 20 minutes or 45 minutes. I'm sure if you added up all the amount of like minutes this woman has talked, it should be like 2 p.m. by now instead of, well, she's saying that it's nine o'clock. <laughs> She asks us one more time. She's like, are you sure that you want to go back? You guys have a lunch reservation for after the tour at like 2 p.m. Is she coming to that too? Like, absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. She would have been coming to that. And we're like, yeah, we're sure we want to go back. Like this just is, I'm sorry, this isn't what we signed up for. Like we really appreciate everything that you're doing, whatever. And then she starts talking to me directly. And she's like, are you sure you want to go back? Like you really want me to cancel the reservation? Are you sure? Yes or no? And I'm just saying, yes, yes, I'm sure. I'm sorry, I'm sure, yes. But it's like escalating. Amari, if you would have been there, we would have molly whopped that woman. Like, thank fucking God it was other people who are like better than the fighters. Like if it was Ari, like if it was the... The volatile Vegas ones would have fucking spit in that bitch. I face. think he- they would have spit in a 55 year old. I know that she's just exaggerating a little bit, like to appear tough. And she talks like this quite a bit. But like, if you can't even walk up some stairs or you can't even walk for a mile, how are you going to have the um, physical aptitude to fight? Because <laughs> like I say, I do boxing. And when you have to spar for, I think it's two minutes or so. Wow, those two minutes feel like a long time. It's exhausting. So I just, again, I don't believe her when she's like, I'd have thought and I'd have like, like spit in this woman's face or like hit her or whatever. I just don't, I don't believe it. I'm sure she's just embellishing, but it's all fine. But just use some fake names then because this woman's business is actually getting flooded with bad reviews because of this story. She finally opens the bottles of wine and pours up a glass for everyone. Is it a baby glass? It is maybe a teaspoon of wine in this glass. And she's having us shake it through the motions. I want to hear it go, 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 go. Yep. go. <laughs> she's having us shake it through the motions, see the stems. And I get that that's like a little bit of a part of a wine tour. What do you mean a little bit of the part? That is a wine tour. That's a wine tasting. That's what you're meant to do. You're meant to like area or some shit. I don't know. I don't drink wine. And even when I used to like drink, 
and drug. I didn't care about wine unless it got me drunk. So I wouldn't have gone on a wine tour in the first place. So what, I'm playing along. I'm trying my yeah, fucking now- But there are tears in my eyes, okay? Mm-hmm. Like I am so, so unhappy, but I'm trying my best, you know? <laughs> like imagine that. <laughs> She's from America. And you know that most Americans, that's just me saying words. That's probably not correct. But from what I've seen, a lot of Americans don't leave their own state, let alone their own country. And they don't really have the opportunities to go overseas to go somewhere like Paris, right? And she's complaining that there were tears in her eyes because she was in the beautiful French countryside doing a wine tasting with some woman that was just passionate about wine. Like, do you not hear yourself? Are you not... Like, vent in private. There's nothing... Like, vent in private, right? No issues there, but you have to be aware socially that there's something called a cost of living crisis and maybe people aren't going to be so endeared to your stories when they're this out of touch. She has us take a sip. She's making us gargle it and swish it around and tell us how it feels in the roof of our mouth (laughs) and telling us why it feels that way in the roof of our mouth, why, whatever. And then how to pour it out of them. All this. Do you think she's trolling you? That's a wine taste. Brooke. I think she had a touch of the, (laughs) a touch of the. Don't say tism. Okay, so that, a touch of the, I think she's been listening to Theo Von too much. I know she likes Theo Von. When you, you oh my God, bro. Okay, buddy? What happened? Was that a hate crime? Are we gay? There's a big difference between Theo Von, the comedian and stand comedian, and Tana Mojo, the YouTuber and pathological liar. I like Theo Von too. He has this kind of strange innocence about him and this, auto correct way you know like when you just press the middle button in auto correct and it comes up with a with a story he has that sort of approach to talking because like you can tell that there's not he, he's just bullshitting and there's not really a malicious intent i feel like fiovon can get away with saying a lot more stuff than someone like tana mojo maliciously telling a story can i feel like that's where that's come from and Read the room a little bit. I was going to make this point earlier, but I'm going to make it now. Tana Mojo has a manager. She would have people watching this. She would have people editing this. It baffles me when stuff like this gets past all these many levels of production to getting to upload. Like KSI recently got in trouble because he said a slur for Asian people in one of the recent Sidemen videos. And KSI is he's much more popular than Tana Mojo. But again, there's like so many people and managers who would watch this content first when you're at that level. So all of them okaying it and being like, nah, there'll be no backlash. Like, cause we're aware in England that you shouldn't say that, like that word is a slur. We are, people were less aware like a decade ago, but now come on. With the news talking about this stuff all the time. So it just astound- astounds me when creators get into like, when, when big popular creators who outsource their work, their editing, camera work, whatever to other people and who have managers when everyone like gives it the green light and thinks no way, there's no possible way that this will garner some backlash. Like that baffles me. That's so strange. She hands Paige a bottle of wine and then says, and now drink it how you would drink it. And Paige Paige is like, Paige makes a very silly joke and she puts it on her arm and makes a joke that she's going to like slam it like a, you know what I mean? And we all laugh. She doesn't do it, whatever. And Cynthia turns and says, maybe only civilized people should have a drink. So, but like (laughs) this Tana Mojo, she's been on YouTube for so long. If you've been paying attention, you know what she's like. I can imagine that they were just being obnoxious and vile on this trip so what the lady's not allowed to be a bit snippy she's not like she's complaining that she can't get drunk on a wine tour so what's wrong with calling her uncivilized like what's what's wrong with that really were you doing this whole video calling her see you next tuesday i'm only saying that i'm not adverse to saying that word i just don't want to get demonetized calling her a whore etc etc and then like you're surprised when someone calls you obviously this is all after the fact but like you can't be surprised when someone calls you uncivilized. You fucking whore. Fuck, fuck you. Okay, this is like, I didn't sign up for etiquette class. Take a joke. Who talks to people like that? Cynthia. Like, Cynthia. Cynthia talks to people like that. I have to get up and like walk it off and Damien comes over to like calm me down. I'm crying. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. Crying from something like this. Obviously, I don't believe like she actually was crying or whatever, but like... If you're gonna cry from something like this, 
I'm trying to remember the last time that I had like a bad confrontation with someone where I cried. Like actually cried. No. It hasn't happened in years. Like, why are you crying at a wine tour? Grow up. Have a drink. Or don't. That might be the problem. Pour me. Pour me. Pour me another drink. And Damien's just trying to like talk me down off of it and being like, hey, listen, like this is clearly just her life's passion. She said to me she felt so bad that you're not enjoying yourself. Like blah, blah, blah. You know, like. And I like calm down. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go back over there with the best possible mindset. And I'm just going to like try to allow this woman to talk and, you know. Yeah. Whatever. Imagine all these other older people just on this wine tour and then they can see this very rich, young influencer from LA getting wound up about a wine tour. Like to be able to go on a wine tour in the first place, if it really was $500 a head, is a bit of a privilege, right? I don't know what my point was with saying that, but like, I'm just gonna put it out there and see what you guys grow from that. And I sit down and she goes on her 50th tangent about something that no one gives one absolute flying fuck about. I think the other people who paid to be there would care about what this um, wine lady expert has to say. And I open my phone to receive a text message. Oh no. And she turns to me like a fucking teacher and goes, I'll wait. Oh, she Clinton caned you. <laughs> can't, can't have your phone out? I'll wait. And uh, the Paris car service cancels. So now we are stranded. I put on my big glasses and I'm just crying under them and I'm just wiping and I'm just trying not to let anyone know I'm sobbing. I'm so sad. And then Cynthia offers to us that we can take the vineyards car service. And I'm like, thank you so much, Cynthia, for the offer. That's the first thing you've done today that I don't absolutely want to curb stomp you for. If you can't even walk up some stairs, how are you going to curb stomp someone? Because you have to be kind of like <laughs> acting as though that's something that I just do on the weekends. A thank you would have sufficed. Ty brings up like, hey, if this car service isn't going to leave until like one, that's when our reservation was for, should we just go eat at the restaurant because we're all hungry, we haven't eaten, right? So I turn to everyone as a courtesy and I say, would you guys want to do that? Like, what you know what I mean? What do you, what do you guys want to do? And she starts screaming at me. You said you wanted to cancel. You said you wanted to cancel. You said you wanted to cancel. And I'm looking at this bitch going, I did, I do, I do. Like, and it gets like that. Like it starts getting like very much, Choppy. we're escalating. I doubt it. I doubt it. And you know why I doubt it? I saw, I don't know where I saw this. And it was ages ago. There was a video that someone did, I can't remember for the life of me, where she had this whole story time of this Disney star stealing cocaine from her. And this person did this video where I don't know where they got it from, but it was a phone call between Tana and the person who was the supposed Disney star's friend. And Tana was like fully admitting that the story was completely made up. So I just don't believe that like some 55 year old French a woman was being like da 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 in her face and it was getting to that point. I just don't believe it. I'm ready to fucking go with this bitch. She finishes her next hour and a half spiel to everyone else about whatever the fuck she's talking like, about. We're I at am like 24 hours now. I wonder if Brooke believes it. We're at 24 hours now. Do you know what I mean? Like, I wonder if she believes it. I wonder if she's kind of keeping quiet because, well, she's got to. This is her meal ticket, right? This show. Arrives. They open the doors. Does Cynthia get in? And Cynthia get in! Now why? The woman is now riding with us for three hours. Three hours, doubt it. But that's because she's going back home, isn't she? Like to where she lives, in, near Paris, right? Why do you want to ride in a car with me? I think she was having fun with you. I think that she was like, she probably At was getting her point, fit. At one point, I remember walking away and she asked them, she's like, ask them what I do for a living. And then Paige is telling her and she's like, in our town, we hate girls like her. I mean, can you blame her at this point for not liking young influencers when a lot of influencers kind of act this entitled? And like, Everyone in Paris had been so kind to me. Wait, 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 wait. That's the most unbelievable part. So like the French countryside people were being really rude apparently, but people in Paris, pa and I'm allowed to say this because my boyfriend's French. He says, it's a, like, it's a known thing that Parisians are rude. Even he, my boyfriend says that like the rest of France don't really fuck with the 
Parisians because they're rude. That's the most unbelievable part. Oh yeah, everyone in Paris was super nice to me, but these countryside people know they're being horrible. What are you talking about? At one point I put my headphones in, but I'm still listening to her. She goes on another 10 minute tangent to Ty about how she hates influencers and she hates people who do what we do for a living. Can you blame her? If that's true, of course, can you blame her? And she looks at me and she asks me, where are you going after you're in Paris? And I go, oh, I think, I think we're gonna go to Positano. I think we're gonna go to Italy. And she goes, good luck with all the stairs there. Honestly, she ate with that one. No, that's funny. We're not even on your turf anymore, bitch. Square up. Attenzione, pickpocket. I'm about to <laughs> rob your ass. I on Instagram. Kill. I feel like Tana is one of those people who's definitely all bark and no bite, which isn't to say that she's not going to fights because I'm sure that she has, but it's always like she's trying to prove that she's really tough and she'll get into loads of fights, except she can't even walk a mile, so like the physical stamina just like ain't there for fighting fighting you know i feel like she's trying to prove herself it's kind of like those um it's like the opposite of those what are they called you know like the really big muscle men and they do these like what i eat in a days where they eat like ten thousand, like the world's strongest men they eat ten thousand calories whatever and they're always just like so nice and softly spoken and chill do you, the strong men that's what i'm on about and it's because they can be because they don't need to prove to anyone that they could beat someone in a fight because their muscles are bigger than my head. You know, I feel like this is the inverse of that. She leaves. She says bye to everyone but me. Sends another WhatsApp to Rob an hour later and says, again, tell her good luck with the stairs in Positano. Doubt. And at that point, it's like, okay, so she was clearly mad as fuck as well. Do you know what I mean? Like for her to wait an hour later, like... Like I wasn't, wasn't, it was still on her mind. And she was like, you know what? Let me go ahead and send one more text. Pics or it didn't happen. And now I'm hot. You know what I mean? I get the name of the seller. I get her name. The name of the seller is. Oh, wow. No, she fully, I thought like she just doxed her name or whatever. And then people turned it together somehow. No, she fully doxed the business and the wine. Wow. That's, that's malicious. Paris to. At this time of night, it's an hour and a half car journey or one hour, 30 minute train or, well, there's always a bus that you can take that takes about two and a half hours. So even going via like, you, like that's three different trains, two and a half hours, that's nowhere near the four hours, three hours that she was talking about. The shortest one here is one hour 37. And that's just like the four automated ones that come up. And on their website, tour and tasting, Included, tour and tasting, duration, one hour, 30 minutes. And that's the tour and tasting part. So they walked from the train station to there, which was about like a mile or so, because it took like 30 minutes. And then the tour and tasting side is one hour, 30 minutes. And that's a lot of like standing there and from the pictures, looking at the distillery. Is that the word? Well, looking at the vats, I guess. So where the fuck is the six miles of walking, six to seven miles of walking? Where is it? Because I don't see it. And even me going on the website is me trying to give Tana the benefit of the doubt to see that if maybe like I'm wrong, getting the wrong end of the stick. No, there's just, what are you talking about? But like why embellish and lie and then dox if it's that easy that I just did a simple Google search to refute like most of what she's complaining about. Come on, you've been on YouTube for like a billion years. She sends her final message to Rob three days, four days later now. And she says, They may love her in America, but girls like her are nothing to us here. Pick so it didn't happen. And I was never just outwardly rude to her. Doubt. Like every single interaction started with her being a fucking to me. Doubt. Yeah, you were just responding as as you should, in my opinion. Although I, I will say you do embellish sometimes. And if I'm going to give her like the biggest benefit of the doubt, I might say that, well, in American culture, because the service in- industry is predicated so much upon giving good service to get tips because of the lack of minimum wage or minimum wage being like $2 in some states. I shouldn't know any of this. If I was to give the biggest benefit of the doubt, maybe it's just that, you know, she's used to people licking her ass in America to get money for the tips and stuff. And French people are a little bit more direct, maybe a little bit blunter in comparison to American service. And maybe she's misinterpreted it. 
as really rude and that is given the hugest benefit of the doubt but i absolutely do think that she knows what she's doing with this well i'm really sorry that that happened to you did you at least get drunk by the end no that is horrible i came back that is the worst part i came back and like just went to a little if you don't black out on a wine tour it's like what did i just do that's not a wine tour like what are you talking about that's not a wine tasting anyway a tasting is literally it's in the name you you taste the what at least in europe i guess I, I kind of want Cynthia dead. No offense. No, I, I literally, I, I, I absolutely want her dead. Very mature, much growth. So yeah, saying all of this in front of um, half a million people. So unfortunately, this is very much, and this has acquired a lot of backlash like on Reddit and those types of places. Not so much in her top comments. But unfortunately with Tana Mojo, she has proved several times that she is the boy who cried wolf. So that who to believe who to believe? And even if she did have a bad experience, don't dox people and their businesses and their locations. When you have a large audience, it's just, it's so irresponsible. And it's a shame because it did seem like she was doing better being sober, at least not drinking, or I'm assuming doing hard drugs. Because that's the thing. If you're regularly doing cocaine, which like, of course, influencers and influencers do, it does change your brain chemistry. When I was doing cocaine all of the time, no, um, at least let's see. When did I start doing cocaine? So I was doing it for five years and I was definitely doing it like minimum once a week and then sometimes several times a week and then it turned into like always being a gram. Like it was just, all, it was always a lot. And when you're doing cocaine like on a very regular basis or even just a semi-regular basis, it changes your brain chemistry and it makes you, you become more paranoid, more prone to being aggressive and reactive and all of these negative traits exacerbates that, yeah? If you're drinking on a regular basis, the unfortunate truth about alcohol is it is a toxin. It affects your gray matter in your brain. Like if you're regularly binge drinking or there's a whole Andrew Huberman episode on this, it's literally like making you a bit dumber. If you're regularly binge drinking or drink like even drinking like a couple units a day or every few days is too much, right? So when you're doing all of this stuff in conjunction with each other, you're not going to be the best version of you possible. It's a shame. And at this point, she's not going to change, is she? Because there's zero incentive to actually change. She's super rich. She's got nice things. She's famous. And the whole, the whole topic of the age some people get, the age people get famous is the age they're forever mentally stunted at. I don't believe, and I think that is used as an excuse to account for some people's behavior because there are people who have been in the public eye for all of their life or most of their life who have done okay. Like look at Drew Barrymore. She was famous from the age of what, like three? And she's not still mentally a three-year-old, is she? Keanu Reeves, famous for decades. Pedro Pascal, famous for decades. And they have grown and matured. I really feel like it's, it's used as such a cop-out excuse for people, which isn't to say that fame doesn't stump people because of course it would. How could it not when you're surrounded by yes men, like saying yes to your every whim, but in Tana's case, I think she's always going to be around because she refuses to go. That's the myth of cancel culture, right? For people in media anyway. Other work, I think it's a bit different. But I think like if you just continue to keep going through all the criticism, you're not really... Because J- James Charles, Shane Dawson, Jeffree Star, they're all doing fine. Maybe not as like well as they used to do, but they're all doing just fine, you know? Anision's not, but I think he's actually quite an outlier. And he's a thoroughly unlikable person. The thing about Tana Mojo is she is entertaining. That's why I was listening to the Council podcast because it is entertaining, you know? I just think she's not actually going to grow and change. I think her career is kind of proof that if you keep telling people the same thing, I've grown, I've matured and I've changed, some people will just believe it and take it at face value. Okay, one final thing. I got something wrong and I'm not willing to put my camera back on. So just look at these pictures instead. The wine tour itself is actually longer than what I said. 12.30 to 2.30, free course gastronomic picnic, uh, paired with different champagnes. If the weather is nice, we'll eat outside on the terrace. So eating together. If the weather is not nice, we'll eat inside. Like she was meant to be sitting down and eating with them and telling them her, them about the champagne. And then at 2.30 to 5 o'clock, driver picks us up, takes us to Rheims. During the journey, I'll talk to you about the role of women in the history of winemaking. And then from 3 to 5, a private visit of this 
house, a cellar visit. So that's just like looking at a house. It looks like there was a bit of standing up, but there was not a six or seven mile hike. There just wasn't. Look, a 30 minute scenic walk to the cathedral. Scenic walk is like a slow walk as well. So that's what, less than a mile. Visit the cathedral, talk about the history, and then the train back to Paris. Duration, 12 hours, cost, you know, four participants, 500 euros per person, includes all of this stuff. So whilst it wasn't just one mile of walking, it certainly was not six to seven. You'd be on your feet looking at stuff, but it wouldn't be a six to seven mile hike. Not happening. Don't believe it. Should I book this tour myself and find out? No, because I don't drink wine. Won't do it. But yeah, and they left at two o'clock or so, they said. And that's why she went back with them, I think, because she was meant to go back to Paris. So maybe she was in charge of, who knows, that's all conjecture, but there you go. That's all I wanted to add in. That's why I wanted to do this video. Are you surprised by any of this audience? Are you surprised by Tana's recent transgressions? What do you think about it? Do you think she's lying? Are you on her side? I would love to not read your comments below, but let me know what you thought. I just felt like I needed a bit of a break from the longer book content, even though this I've been filming for like an hour and a half. So who's the muggins? Me. Anyway, that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, dislike it. I don't care. Follow me on Instagram, podcast channel, third channel, all of that. And remember to download Toon Blast for free via the link in my description box or on the pinned comment and get three hours of unlimited lives and hundred free coins. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.